In this video, we're going to talk about the Cash Flow Manager in Sage 50. You'll find it up here in the Analysis menu. Just click on Cash Flow Manager. It'll take it a minute to, um, to open that window as it analyzes your cash balances and your payables and receivables. And you may get this window right here to up using the Cash Flow Manager. It just gives you a quick overview of uh, what it does. If you don't want it to come back up again, you can, un you can check the Do Not Display the Screen again. I'm just going to close it for now. And so this is what the main cash flow manager window looks like. Um, you can see in the bottom half here, it's actually showing us our projected cash balance, an estimated cash flow, starting cash, incoming, outgoing, ending. And it gets these uh, starting cash based on the cash balances, that your cash accounts that you choose up here to include in the calculation. Incoming is based on your receivables, and outgoing is based on your payables. Um, over here on the graph, you can also choose whether you want to show balance, incoming cash, outgoing cash, or any combination of those. Now back up to the top, you can see that we can choose a time frame, whether you just want to project out 7 days, 14 days, 30 days, 3 months, 6 months, or a year. We'll leave it at 30 days for now. And then you also have some settings over here. So we'll click on the Change Cash Flow Settings button. And this first one is very important, um, projection based on open transactions. And so that means it's going to look at your open receivables and your open payables to determine what cash it expects to be going um, in and out. You also have the option of basing on historical transactions. And so if, you're, um, if your business is very cyclical, that may be a, a useful option for you. And this time frame is just the same same option that we had here. Those two will always mirror each other. And um, there's an option for do you want to show inactive cash accounts in your starting cash calculation and set that however you want. And then here, the expected incoming cash. You can choose which types of transactions you want to be included in your, uh, your projected incoming cash. So these are the most common ones. They're what are selected by default, invoices, receipts, credits, general journal entry, prepayments, vendor receipts. You could add in quotes, proposals, and sales orders if, you know, if you're confident enough that those would be creating incoming cash. And the same thing on the, on the payable side, expect outgoing cash, purchase, payroll, payment, vendor credits, general journal, prepayment, customer payment. And then you could also add in purchase orders um, if you wanted to use that. Uh, for the payroll, that the only thing that's going to show is actual posted payrolls. So if you've already got payroll posted a few days out, that will then show up you know, in, in this calculation. But it's not going to look at, say, time tickets and uh, project payroll based on that. Also on both of these, you have the option of whether or not you want to show transactions that are more than 30 days past due. Um, and here on the receivable side, you can choose to work off of uh, the transaction due date or your customer's average days to pay, which it will calculate that for you. And if you made any changes, you would hit update cash flow. I'm just going to cancel that. And so here again, we could choose which cash accounts, like if we don't want our petty cash included in there, we could turn that off. And you can see it automatically updates down at the bottom. Then we'll come over to expected incoming cash. And now we've got a list of invoices, you know, um, receipts, you know, all the transaction types that we chose to select. And anything that falls within where, where the expected date, which is going to be the due date, falls within our date range, it automatically has selected. Um, but we could go through and, for example, let's say if this invoice right here, if we now expect it to come in, well, I'll show you what happens if I just try to check that. It gives me this message saying that it can't be added because the expected date is not within the time frame. But if I change that to a date within the time frame, then I can select it, and you'll see our cash, our ending cash goes up by that amount. And maybe if it was a case where I was only going to expect to receive half of that, I could put in the amount that I expect to receive within the time frame, and it would adjust everything accordingly. So you can go through all of your receivables and add anything that it, you know, that it's excluded, or if there's something that you don't think is going to come in, 
Uh, you could uncheck it or you could change the amount if you don't expect uh, a full payment on it. The other thing you can do is up at the top, um, if you've got some other source of cash that you expect to come in, like maybe you've got, uh, you're have got going to be borrowing money and have some loan proceeds coming in or you're going to sell a piece of equipment, then uh, you could add that in up here and put in the date that you expect it to come in and the amount, and then you can add that to your projection. And if you need, if you need more than one, you can hit add new row and it'll add another row, for, insert another row for you. On the expected outgoing cash, it works basically the same way, but uh, this time it's looking at your payables. And again, it's automatically selecting things that fall where the due date falls within the time frame up here, but you could you could remove things from that you could add things to that by changing the date to a date within the time frame, and everything updates automatically. So once you've gone through and made your you know um, selections, got everything set the way you want it, you can save this if you just want to be able to come back to this later the same way it is. Uh, you could also print this. Um, you can send it to Excel, or if you want to start over, you can reset. So that's it. That's the cash flow manager in Sage 50. It's a really simple, really powerful tool uh, to help you project your um, your expected cash balance and, and, and cash needs. Much easier than trying to work things out yourself on a, on a spreadsheet. So hope you find that helpful.